Uh, my, sorry, did you get started already? We did not. <laughs> you showed up at the perfect time, just as we went live, Rob. <laughs> it was you this week. I couldn't have planned that better if I'd wanted. Welcome oh, to man. the show, Duder. Uh, sorry, I'm out of breath. I was <laughs> playing Path of Exile and just got a new weapon. I was trying it out or whatever, and I happened to glance at my phone. I see the little Facebook Messenger icon. I was like, oh, I was like, oh shit. <laughs> If you didn't know, Path of Exile is apparently a live-action game where you have to act out the movements. Oh, I just, I'm downstairs. I had to run up and downstairs, tell the girls goodnight and all that. So, anyways, I'm here now. Sorry. Well, welcome to TFLP Microcasters, uh, where, you know, we show up a couple minutes late. It's fine. And we start by just (laughs) randomly talking and not really explaining ourselves. Right, and, and, I, and that too. But explaining myself. All right. You're right. There, there you go. It's true. Sorry, Rob. It's true. I back so, you. Uh, so yeah, um, tonight uh, I've got uh, myself. I've got Christian. Hello. I've got Anna. I'm in the darkness. <laughs> Apparently in the darkness, and then of course Rob. Howdy, howdy. Switch our cameras here. So, so yeah, so we're going to be talking about two things. One is this one. See how I hold up the figure and suddenly it's bright and everything else is dark. I don't understand. Now, when you say this one, Anna, um, for if someone is listening to this on a podcast, you know, I don't actually who is this know one? its Japanese name, so I have to just use Overbite. Yeah, Overbite's overbite. fine. Is it overbite? Is it just yep. always overbite? There go. They're both overbite. Okay. Well then. Overbite is who we're talking about tonight. If you don't know, that's the pretty one of the Seacons. The one that's purple and pink and gold and teal. It's just great. <laughs> you could use his one time Marvel UK name if you wanted to. One time what? He had a different name in one issue of Marvel UK. And what was it? Jawbreaker. Uh, okay. It, you know, one one time it happened. Rob, if you were talking, we can't hear you. Because I was muted. Nice. His name is Jawsome. Jawsome. Yeah. yeah. That'd be great. That's better. Random yeah. Street Stars reference. I have right. him in gun mode. He's a gun. I was gonna say, I actually am I the only one that has him in? Is oh I guess you do as well. So no one has them in his like mode. animal mode, shark mode, or whatever. No. I mean gun mode is practically there. And funny thing is, with my camera's corrections right now, like it seems like the toy is very bright, but I actually can't see what I'm holding in front of my face because <laughs> my room is completely dark. So. Okay. Yeah, I get the toy. Yeah, so Robbie, like, you want a shark or should I? You go for it. Oh, so way. like. Like with the rest of them, there's two in the set, you know, that are colored kind of the light pink and the blue. And then there's the other two that are kind of the different shades of green. Um, and then you got Snap Trap in the middle that, you know, is combining the pinks and the greens together. But then Overbite here is just kind of his own thing. Like, I mean, the green and the pink are all other figures, but the purple is completely just to him. So it's just interesting how they broke up the color layout uh, for the set. I, mean, I, I think it works out nice. I, I love the colors on them all. Shark. I I really like this this one's colors. And I like the shark mode. So I wanna say that like this is the one figure from the Sea Cons that I actually had as a child. Like it's the only one. Um and because of its awesome colors, it actually hung out with my off brand Dinobot. I don't know if anybody else had those like um kind of pastel colored Dinobots that used to be sold at like dollar stores. They were they weren't like exactly the G1 Dinobot modes, but they were really close. To it being was, it, them. was it the prehistory Dinobots or, or no? They weren't the prehistory guys. They were okay. just, they were simpler. They were simpler than the actual G1 Dinobots. They felt like they were directly based on them. And they were just like, they were printed in just random pastel plastic. Very close to Overbite's colors, actually. Rob thinks he might have them. 
Because he likes your cues, like I do. Not like this piece of crap, yeah, is it? Yeah, those! Those! I love okay. those! Yeah, they're fun. I've tried to find others from the set. <laughs> they're, you're either going to find them for a dollar or like $50. Yes. <laughs> like they, there's no middle ground on these. People are like, oh, it's a G1 knockoff. It must be worth a ton. And other people are like, oh, these are garbage. I'm gonna price them like garbage. I can see mine's like kind of broke there or whatever. But yeah, the. Uh, I mean the the tones aren't the same, but you know, purple in the middle, green at the top and the bottom, totally, with pink parts on it. It's the exact same color layout. <laughs> yeah, it really is. They're great. I loved it. So they were friends. They hung out together. They were their own little team of weird colored animal dinosaur things. And the original Overbite was closer in size to those guys because he was very little. So, I don't know. It, it amused me. So so now we find out the real reason why you didn't want to complete the Seacons is because you imagine them as some weird knockoff kind of thing with, with well, your... Uh, Chronicon never really had meaning to me. I don't even think I knew that Chronicon existed when G1 was actually going. Like, I don't think as a kid I knew that was a possibility. I just knew I had one pretty thing that hung out with my other pretty things. And I later found out that there was such a thing as Chronicon. I'm, I'm curious, like, how many kids actually completed their combiners? Like, I feel... I feel like I every kid, that. it's like you had like one guy from one and one from another and, and whatnot. Like, I think that I, I had uh, most of Computron, but I don't, you know, I didn't have all of them. I had I mean, I, all of Defensor. I, mean, I think unless uh, you were like one of the lucky kids, like as a big Christmas present or maybe a birthday present, you know, that like you got the gift set maybe. Otherwise, your parents are just buying, you know, oh, there's a transformer. I'll grab it. Right. You, you know, your grandparents are grabbing it, you know, and you're just going to get whatever they get. And you're getting like five a year, you know, <laughs> so right. good luck completing a combiner team. Yeah, I agree with that. It was it was a lot like that most of the time. I don't know how I ended up with a complete defensor because most of my stuff came from yard cells because I was just, you know, I was a little bit younger a lot of yard than to actually people. find things on the shelves. Well, maybe somehow the, the kid at the yard sale happened to have a complete combiner and, uh, you know, d really was selling annoying. it for the right price. Yeah. Nickel. Yeah. So as far as like, I really feel like this invokes the original toy just fine. Like I don't have the original toy anymore to compare it with. So I can't be like, it's exactly or very different or whatever. But I, I think it does a really good job. Of looking like it, even though, even though it is like ninety percent rubber snapper. Like it, it really, there's a lot of parts that are not changed. And I held up rubber snapper as a comparison. Yeah, I'm okay with that. The parts all work to make this mode okay. I mean, look at he's all sharky. Oh yeah, with absolutely. Lens, I guess, but whatever. That's what he was before. Land shark. Land shark. And they're both kind of land shark things. Like they really, are kind of land shark things. This is just a more monstrous land shark, and this is a land shark that pretends it almost looks like something real. It doesn't. As is the theme with the sea cods, they don't actually look like real things. They are close. They are. They're robots close. in disguise. Okay. <laughs> Robots in really bad disguise. What is that other than an alien robot? <laughs> so yeah, his his beast mode I think is really cool. I think that's probably how I'm going to display him, just because I, I I like their beast modes more than the robot modes, honestly. And while his face is not as expressionate as Lab Claw, who is the cutest of the team, with his Muppet face, <laughs> I. I think that this one is a close second on the amount of expression at base. Rawr. Yeah. So I think it's yeah, cool. He's fine. And like continuing the trend, uh, he has quite a bit of paint on him, I feel. Like all the purple, except for like his forearms, is paint. So like on his hands and his chest and his back and uh, his toesy woesies, all of that's uh, painted his fin. You know, like, all that's accents. And then, you know, of course, in his mouth, he's got the blood-red mouth again. 
you know, the sharp teeth and the, the yellow eyes popped. The paint on his face looks really, really nice. And I think pops as well. It's got a cool gold mask on him, some other gold highlights or whatever. But so again, it's, it's part of the course for this set, but it's, and that's good. The, you know, the whole set for mainline figures has, or, you know, semi mainline has a, uh, a lot of paint on them. Yeah, but, you, you know, know was, Nick hates, but you know the rest of us. I was listening to I'm Nick last night right. talk about how he doesn't like the paint on these figures, and I was thinking, like, I I don't like the amount of paint that goes on MP figures. I do like the amount of paint that goes on these, though. Like, there's still some mindfulness to the fact that there isn't paint in most of the places where your hand's gonna go to hold it and pose it. So you're not gonna do the damage yourself, at least. And there isn't that much friction damage either. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I just put that last night. That's that's a good way to put it. I don't like that amount of paint on MPs, but the amount of paint on these, excellent. Right. Like, I I don't know what it is, like why the paint like is better on these than Masterpiece as far as like not rubbing off. Like, like I've never really had issues with like paint coming off or wearing off on mainline figures. I have had issues with paint chipping on Masterpiece. So I don't know why that is if I just haven't noticed it or what. Yeah, it could be. It's, yeah, I mean that's what that's all it is. It says exactly like Anna said. Here, you know, the spots they put the paint on is very unlikely to chip because it's not having friction on it. On the masterpiece yeah. toys, they're both more complex, so you're going to spend more time fiddling and likely to accidentally hit something that you're not intended to, as well as the parts that do kind of rub up as you're transforming it around. So yeah. it's just kind of a natural oh. consequence of it. Okay, I'm going back to light. And it's so like I was too in the dark. Yeah, now now I'm it's sad. like crazy. It'll 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 adjust. It takes a minute. It's the point. So, um, the one thing that somewhat annoys me about the uh the robot mode is these feet on the side. Like, I wish that there was a way that they could collapse more. Like, cause they just kind of hang out there, and they're really just, just, just feet. Like, it's really neat. Like how the fin. Like, like, I like how that collapses into the leg. I think that that's really cool. But then it's like somehow they couldn't figure out a way to do something with the feet. So, like, I don't know if it was something to where... Because, like, if you collapse the feet like this, they're, like, too long. Like, so, like, you can't really have it like that. You can't really... I mean, I guess you could have it like that, but that looks weird. So, there's not really a great way to to make the feet, like, so that they... They look good in robot mode, at least from what I found. I don't know if you guys have found a better way of, of doing that, but I think this is the official way they're supposed to go, right? I'm not I sure at the moment. I do think that's the official way they're supposed to go, and I hate them. I don't. And, I don't like the way it works out at all. I mean, and it's not much better in robot mode. They have a spot where it's designed to. There's a peg there, and it's designed to peg into the side of his foot here, but it doesn't. <laughs> Simply put. It like kind of maybe rests there a little bit, but it really easily wants to pop out. It's it's not very oh, happy yeah. there. Mine pegged in pretty hard actually. Yeah. Which part? Yeah. The head? It, in the back? No, in gun mode, his back legs into the. Oh, side okay. Legs. I've been doing gun mode. Oh, yeah. The, Mine... the peg on the side, right where the feet go here, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Right here. Yeah, mine peg in super hard. So maybe that's just a tolerance thing. Yes, it's good. Can I get a loud, like, that was a resounding pop. I don't know if my AirPods can pick it up. But, oh. Yeah, no, I think it you know, pops actually, every time. When I turned the foot to the front, one of them went in a little better, actually. Yeah, so, okay. No, okay. Yeah, Christian's right. You just gotta, had to be more forceful with it. Now, like, the front of the legs on mine don't peg into it super great. Like, like they're in there and they're fine, but... I don't know. It, it doesn't give... It's very satisfying. Like, I can't close the gap up on the side. It kind of keeps wanting to open back up, and that's... Maybe have something twisted ever so slightly. No. Why is the same? So, So, the one thing for me, like... Okay, so this figure looks really neat. Like, I like all the colors. Looks cool and everything. But I feel like he is, like, the one, for me, at least, the, the one extraneous character. Like, I really just need the combiner, and I didn't necessarily need this guy. Because you can't, he can't hold him. Like, if you make the gun mode, the combiner can't really hold him. So, and then, and the combiner comes with, like, a thousand guns anyway. So, it... 
like this one seems like it's almost like extra. Like I don't necessarily know that I like needed to get it, but on the one, you're, you're wrong. Poseidon. Yeah, you're wrong because it's part of Piranicon. He's a 16 member, and two, I have a god Neptune for you that you're gonna love. Right. <laughs> like I almost if if Hasbro. Like, let's say yeah. that instead of them offering the selects, right, or if they would have offered the selects, but then they said, oh, you get a five-membered box set. It's the exact same as uh, God Neptune or whatever, but it's in those colors, and it's $185 instead of whatever I paid for all these six. I, I think I might have done that. I don't know. Wow. So I probably would have left out again. Part. Because I know Luke is he's talking about him being extraneous. Is he canonically the one that's the gun, or is he a one sometimes? Depends I, I'm on not where, actually it depends sure. on who you ask and when you ask it. Okay. And that's as, kind of what King, I figured. as King Poseidon, he it, Overbite is the gun. As okay. Piranicon, he was designed to primarily be the gun, but the rest of the Seacons hate combining with Nodlater so much that they make Nodlater be the gun. <laughs> <laughs> that's the deal. Okay, perfect. Well then. See, I, I think he is necessary. He is my... Oh, it's really hard. Like, I honestly want to say he's my favorite of the set. Lobclaw is definitely better, but this one is just nostalgia for me. Like, it's nostalgia. All of this is nostalgia hard. for us. Let's, was, let's get that straight. But this was one of my favorite toys growing up. Like, this yeah. pink, purple, and teal monstrosity was one of my favorite things along with those awful dinobots as you said it because I, I like the fact they were pretty colors and they were still killer robots so they were cool so for me he's having nostalgia the one problem i have is that mine is and also my tend to kill as well mentioned in a second like there are just some spots where he's not in super good condition like this is floppy because it's kind of sort of broken in there like one of the one of the pegs that holds on this neck assembly in the back here is actually it came um, basically stress marked to the point where it doesn't really hold anymore. Like you can oh, get no. it to peg in either in head mode or on his back for the backpack, but it's probably going to come off most of the time when I transform it. I made the joke earlier that it that his head and. Um, and Tentacle's left arm are going to go off and make a family together because they both really want to leave their bodies because they just do not like staying on the voice. Um, and it, it's kind of a bummer because, like, the tolerance and quality and everything had been really good on every other figure I've gotten because I've handled five out of six of these, my own four out of six of them. And I've been happy until I get these two, <laughs> who are kind of the neat ones. Yeah, I mean, I think part of that is just a design. Like, sure, the head goes oh, in right. there, there's tabs, and, you know, it stays in there fine. But, yeah, the second you touch it, it's like, bloop, I'm out. I'm not – he's not solidly in there. It just slots in there. It doesn't, like, really tab in and, and hold. You know, it doesn't give you that transformation satisfaction very well. I agree. See, it's interesting you say that. So, like, when I first got uh, this and was messing with it, the – um like the head part, the part that connects to the head is tolerance, like somewhat tight. But then this piece right here, actually, like when I first grabbed it out, it like came out, but mine isn't stress marked, but it just, it comes off like relatively easily. I mean, not, not that easy, but it like originally when it first came, like it, it, it came off and so I had to put it back on, but it hasn't, I haven't had any issues with stress marks and whatnot. Yeah, it's just, I, I mean, I think mine kind of just came like that, and it's fine. Like, it's it's honest to goodness not going to be a problem in either mode. Like, I'm going to be able to peg it in for either mode. It's just when I transform it, it's probably going to come off most of the time. So, yeah. I can, like, I can get mad at it then and then make it into a little finger puppet for a couple minutes and then put it back on. It'll be fine. I think, I honestly, I'm more bummed with the fact that this thing is super loose for me. Like my my tentacle is kind of a mess, and oh. it's so a bummer. So, so question for Anna: Did you ever pick Future up the floor polish? I have some. I haven't tried to use it yet, just because the one time I tried to fix the joint, I broke it way worse. So I, because um, I was trying to fix the joint on that um, 
the the girl dinosaurs from the fans project and i ended up like all their oh. ankles died instead well, of fixing one ankle yeah. I ended up with so no future is going to be a little bit different it's not like super glue or whatever but i i would try on that figure trying to put some future on it and seeing if that you know helps it out just get a q-tip and some future put it on the ball joint and see see if that like you know put a couple coats on it yeah i'll put it dry if i can get him to keep his arms on you can't really screw it up yeah it's it's pretty much impossible to screw up future like it just yeah put a little on there let it sit (laughs) yeah yeah so it's it's not like super glue like if you put super glue on yeah yeah, you can screw up a foot figure but I mean, technically future, yeah, it's it's on there, but it'll wear off eventually and all that. So it's, it's, it's like the least invasive, I feel like if you had to do it, but it doesn't, you might try to eat the plastic or anything like glue does. Mm -hmm. I'll probably try it just because I, like, I figured this will probably be the mode I have it displayed in most of the time will be Squidipus monster, but I don't think that, um, I don't think I'll never want to transform it again. And in robot mode, its arms just <laughs> take off. Just go on fun adventures. Yeah. Well, th- that was the one thing that I thought that you weren't going to like that figure just because of the tolerances are a little bit loose. And for you, like, it's important to get that, like, good pose. It is. It is. And it can't hold a lot of poses that I want it to. But that's partially because of the joints and partially because the backpack is somehow bigger than Moon Racers. <laughs> they fixed the bowl and they made it look a lot better, but the backpack is larger. It's a massive backpack. So, it's you know, that, that's one thing that everyone is complaining about RC being a parts former, uh, the one that's going to be coming out. But I'm actually kind of happy about that. Cause like, if you actually right. see the backpack or whatever that it creates, like it's a pretty big backpack. So I- I'm kind of happy it, that it can become a skateboard or whatever. Hoverboard, but doesn't she whatever still have is. a big backpack at that? She Isn't still has a decent size one. Yeah. It's still it's decent like a, size. Yeah. It's like a backpack that kind of, I don't know. It just kind of gives her the right silhouette. So I thought it was okay. So are we ready to move on to the combined mode? Oh, yeah. I think so. Like, I really like this. I wish that it wasn't, I wish that nothing had bad tolerances ever, but um, he also can't really hold his gun up like too long. Like it will fall down eventually, but it's not too terrible. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I, I think that this is where, if you're a weird person like me and you don't care about finishing the combiner and you just want a few of them, I think that this one is a solid pick because it is pretty and it has good paint apps and it makes a fun little monster. I, I've been trying to convince Anna to get one more Seacon because right now she has four. <laughs> so it's like... And she has Snap just, Trap, right? If you had one more, you would, yeah, you would be trap. able to actually complete a combiner. Yeah, Snap Trap is one yeah, of them. So but, it's like... Oh, you just I had I had Waterface, whatever his name is, Sea Flight, um Flying Sea Monkey, Ray. Help me here. Seaweed. There we go. Um, I had him and I sold him like the night we finished the show after we were done. <laughs> I can see Tentacle going the same direction, honestly, just because the tolerance bothers me that much. Um but we'll see. We'll see after I try to fix it if I like it better or if I just give up before I even try. Now, to be Wait, fair, part of the reason that you sold Sea Wing, though, right, was because Jaron was like, if only I could find a Sea Wing. And you're like, I, I'm not a huge fan. Here you, here you go. Is that kind of the way it went down? Yeah. And I think if someone were to come up to me with the same thing about Tim to Kill right now, and they were like, I really need it to finish my combiner because I have some sort of need for it, I would probably sell it to them because it's just not it's not thrilling me and i'm going to have most of the mold when the um when the set comes out for god um, God neptune yeah so eh, whatever i mean i like the figure you know i mean it's it's seacon so i i like them i like the colors or whatever but i can't disagree with you know it's kind of extraneous if all you care about is combined mode, because he cannot hold it, which we'll get into in a second, it's it's not going to hold up in gun mode at all, and he is the probably the worst tolerance of them, just because you know again, the sides of the legs don't tab in super great, and how the head comes off really easily, so he's just 
not the most not the head but the head untabs or whatever in combined mode oh yeah it's not like the head itself falls off sorry it's like is it coming coming off jeez yeah it's yeah so there's, there's there's some weak weak points on it for sure So, so yeah, so combined mode. Yeah, game, he's probably like number three for me. Three. What? Probably. Like, as far as like ranking the Seacons, Overbite's probably number three for me. If that helps anybody. That's. I think. Helpful. You mean Jawbreaker? I think he's Jawbreaker. probably number number five for me. I think Sea Wing's probably the you know number six, right? If we yep. say that, um, I think all the other ones I think I'd rather have though. So. so let's do combined mode. He's combined. Look, Yay. I did it. I just have a torso. I, so I've got a camera because, you know, we could do that. on on the combined mode, but I'm kind of worried to touch it and move it around. Yeah. So it's a goddamn train wreck. Rob... All right. <laughs> Rob said, you know, spoiler alert, that it has trouble standing. I thought today, I, I took him out earlier today to mess around with him so I could be ready for tonight. I thought that I could prove Rob wrong by saying, oh, we just need Oops. to put the hands on the back of the feet and it stands better. Because mine had been falling over too. I just kind of had it resting on the back of the shelf. And then I put the hands on, or it, it had been falling over, so I had it resting on the back of the shelf. So I put the hands on the feet and it stood up. For a while and i was like oh it's all all everything's solved and then as soon as i brought him over here to where i do my podcasting uh he, he completely fell over and tend to kill fell off and it was horrible so yeah he's got trouble standing so like when i so i got all my six at once so when we did the first one i had them all you know and i was i was playing with it at first i was like oh it doesn't stand and then Lucas is like, oh, you know, it, it, it does. You got to fill with it or whatever. And I was like, oh, he's right. I got it to stand. Everything's fine now. And then each week as I was going and, you know, taking it back off to break off a limb for the show, I kept realizing more. I was like, okay, no, no, it does not stand at all. I mean, you can eventually get it, but it, it's it's pretty rough, unfortunately. Mine so is presently I think... held by Overbite being the gun and a cane at the same time. That's there's, what mine does. <laughs> there's, there's, uh, there's a couple different issues. With it. Like one is, is the fact that all of these figures have a lot of extra stuff on them, you know, like extra parts and whatnot. Like that adds to the weight of the figure, and so then that is one of the reasons, you know. And then also, like, of course, we're gonna like have him holding his massive sword and his, you know, guns and whatever, and so then. Like, again, like most of these Combiner War figures just are not really made to hold that kind of stuff or like any heavy stuff. And so it's, you know, it's a tendency to want to, uh, you know, kind of fall over. Um, and I think the other thing is, is as much as we, you know, on the first show when we got it and I was like, oh, these these feet are amazing. Like they solve all the issues and whatever. I, th I think part of the issue are the feet. Um, because, it, and I somewhat kind of actually hope the perfect effect actually comes out with some new feet because I actually grabbed, um, like I've had all my other combiner wars combiners, like just kind of like hanging out on a shelf. Like I haven't touched like most of them in forever. And I grabbed my, uh, Superion and I was just shocked by like how, like just, solid it, it is with these perfect effect feet kit um on them just because the ratchets in those are not going to move all over the place on them like it's the really hard ratchets the ratchets are have more um ratchets in them and so to find that perfect spot is a lot easier on the perfect effect ones than it is on um these these new takara ones yeah, those huge feet really help with stability. And that's the thing to remember with those perfect effects feet is that they are really big. But it mm -hmm. helps a lot. Like, they don't look bad big. They're not, like, stupid big looking. They're just, they're really large. Now, the the foot with the hand on the back, it's supposed to look like this, right? That's right. what you're supposed to do, just stick it on the back? That looks yep. ridiculous. <laughs> I, I did mine a bit different, but it's essentially that, yeah. 
You made the, the fingers go up. Made the fingers go up. But, Slightly um... less torturous looking. The fingers might actually issue. help me keep balance. If you have some of the Power we'll of the Primes uh, hands, you could sub those out for the back. And those yeah, probably actually would look that. okay. Yeah, Lucas was talking about how there's so much extra stuff on these. And I think that has shifted the center of gravity much more forward than the previous Combiner Wars combiners did. And so even with the feet on the back, the hands on the back of the feet, it, they're not catching much of the weight because all the weight is going forward. Yeah, it's it's like bigger feet always help a balance on a figure. But this the balance problems here are much more than just, oh, the feet aren't large enough. Because the feet are pretty large. They're, you know, yeah, it's they're just, big. Yeah, I mean, but it's like... The articulation at the knees and at the ankles in two directions, like they don't. Nope, he just, he just fell. There he goes. Yep. Uh, I know that just, sound. Yeah, <laughs> they just uh, they don't hold their weight well enough to hold a pose, and they don't ratchet at the right spots to hold where the weight is. Yeah, the the hands and feet are really well. They're really nice looking. Like they look a lot better. Like if you go all the way back to Combiner Wars, when our hands and feet look like garbage. You know, and then you come to these. These are so much better looking. These are actually kind of cool looking feet and they're cool looking hands. So they work. The only thing I don't like about the hand design is something that's been a constant in these. And that's having the peg to hold things actually be recessed in the thumb. I just don't think that looks good. The way weapons kind of sit on top of the thumb instead of actually sitting in the hand opening. But, you know, that's that's something I don't think most people are going to be bothered by that I am. Well, let's talk about weapons for a second, because I want to talk about how the gun modes of the individual Seacons work. We, we already mentioned that he can't really hold them up with the arm articulation very well, but they kind of connect to the combiner in an interesting way. So here's the hand. Uh, here's the big giant hole in the middle of it, because you can pull it out like the power of the prime's hand. And you go with the combiner peg, boop, onto the hand, and now... It's holding the gun like on the side of the hand as opposed to holding it in the hand. I think that's a cool compromise. I mean, that's a great way to combine it. Plus, it doubles. I think you can turn the hands into stands or something to hold right. the, the weapon modes. But it's a cool way to integrate that combination. Yeah, I think that could be a good compromise for sure. Sorry, I can't find my sword that dropped. <laughs> I think it's, it's that they right. didn't want to make new toolings for 5 millimeter yeah. pegs. Yeah. And so they they adapted what they had, with which was the combiner peg, and I think that's perfectly fine. I think it's fine. Now, I did want to say, just because we just started talking about the combine mode, I just wanted to say, like, the torso is basically, and unfortunately it's just not picking this one up very well, my camera is, so, um, you know, if anyone else wants to kind of, like, highlight their torso. Um, I want to say that this torso is basically like third generation silver bolt, right? Like it's like from silver bolt to hunger to this. And I like, I constantly say the silver bolt is the best torso bar none. And I really think that this actually looks cooler. Like this is finally a cooler looking torso. Like it actually comes off neat. The little silver wings are fantastic. The way the colors play are good. And just the way it looks pretty solid. Like, it actually looks like it's supposed to be a torso, not just that it's a, a dude who contorted himself into a torso. It looks like it's supposed to be, and it's a good head sculpt, too. So I was actually really happy, because I hadn't turned this into a torso yet. I had just turned it into Super Turtler and put it on the shelf. And now it's, it's a nice torso. His ears can wobble. Boop, 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 boop. Ears can wobble. I mean, I think ultimately, like, all of these, like, combiner figures, um, you know, are just, like, they're they're almost there. They're, like, 90% there, but it's just, it's hard to get really good articulation out of these. And, like, I had, you know, I had mentioned to Christian before, like, I would kind of actually love for Hasbro to tackle combiners again, but not, like... Like, leave all of the limbs, like, like those bodies, like, just leave them the way they are. But come out with, with better torsos that have, like, better articulation. And then, you know, uh, hands and feet that are better. And, you know, charge me leader price. Charge me, like, 50, 60 bucks for that. And, and I would buy it just because, like, I feel like that you can never just get quite 
the articulation you want out of like uh, these combiners. I agree with that. The articulation is always just a little bit more limited than I want it to be. Like it's pretty close. They do usually. really well in static poses. They do really well in static poses. I mean, I'm poses. looking at it now. Sure. I've got it to a place where it can stand, and he's kind of holding the sword up a little bit. I can't show you because I'm not to move him. But he looks good. He looks intimidating. He looks, you know, ready to mm -hmm. ready to go. But any sort of action posing, yeah, you can't do with him. Yeah, I mean, it's combined wars figures are hard enough to do that with, and then we, when we add the weight that these guys have for the remold, it's it's definitely tough. And that is I one mean, of the reasons, like, I really like Superion, but I did go ahead and get rid of mine and get the, the knockoff oversized one, just because the way that fate is constructed, like, it's just, they, they took the, they took all the joints and basically made them better. And that thing can actually hold action poses. Like, the thing is enormous, it's the size of Devastator and Predakine, but it actually holds the poses that I couldn't quite get my Superion to hold, and that's just what I wanted the toy to do. So I think it's definitely fixable. Now, I will say, to be fair, of like, you know, the third party companies have come out with combiners, like all the TFC combiners, like whoever still has those, like they're probably doing the lean back and, you know, whatnot on, on oh, yeah. those. Not those all kinda... of them. Some of them, some of them do, some of them don't. Like, I mean, it's a mixed bag. But I, I saw several I, of them. I feel Your like they definitely did it. I, I feel like the only the one that really has like held up over time, I feel like is Make Toys Giant is like one of the few ones that is just a fantastic like like the joints and all that on the one that I have is just as good now as what it was when, you know, it first came out like however many years ago. But part of the reason for that is is it's just a lot lighter than all these other ones like all these other ones just have so much extraneous stuff like i think that the zeta and toy world combiners the mp ones are good but their ratchets are j like it's literally almost impossible to move some of those those ratchets uh in the, the and they um, also used a bunch of extra parts to achieve yeah. that too that like too. big honk and just parts that you just toss to the side in separate modes yeah so, yeah I mean, that's it go ahead I just, you know, combined mode, he, he looks the part. The look is great. He, he looks excellent. You know, you're not going to get a very dynamic pose. He's definitely not going to ho hold uh, the sixth member, in, a sixth member in gun mode. Um, you know, he can hold his sword fine. You can toss all the other bullshit weapons onto each other to make a big super gun or something, and he'll probably hold that ish. Um, yeah. But, you know, he looks the part. He looks good. But, yeah, it's. It's got flaws. It's got serious flaws that if anybody, especially is trying to hunt it on the secondary market, I'd want them to be aware of that. Yo, you might have trouble if you're expecting to be able to plug this thing together and pose it around. No, you're going to have to fiddle and fiddle with it to get it to stand. And then you're going to leave it alone. You know, if you, now if you want to go to individual robot modes or monster modes, go to town, man. You know, they're, I think it's great for that. Really good. And there are stands. There are stands they make that are like, primarily designed to hold like weapons or like fireballs on like your Dragon Ball Z figures. There are stands that you could get to just help kind of like, you know, put under the arm to let you get an action pose that are, they're made clear. They're not invisible. They definitely stand out. You can see them still. They but, you stand know, out. Ha ha. <laughs> they would let you get that pose that you want without completely having to, you know, rebuild the figure or ruin it. You know, you would get what you wanted out of it. And honestly, like, I have a few on my shelves downstairs. My shelves I never show you guys because they're, like, anime figures. And they look just fine. Yeah. I mean, I feel I mean, like, I again, with the, like, Combiner Wars figures in general, like, or the Hasbro, the mainline ones, is that they're really fun to flip between modes. Like, I think that that's kind of the advantage of all of these. Like, I, you know, again, Rob, like that TFC combiner, how often uh, how often have you flipped that back and forth? Oh, I, I've hardly, I anything mainline-ish, I hardly ever touch, period. Like, you know, after I get it and fiddle with well, it I'm a saying bit, your, you third, know, your third party figure, like how often do you flip all of those into I don't. multiple modes? But I, I, I don't do that with Combiner Wars either. 
like the yeah. the few of those I've bought. I don't I don't fiddle with those either. If I'm going to fiddle with something, I use a grabbing masterpiece, yeah. or you know, hmm. yeah. Hmm. And like, so I got my guy here. He's standing up and he's standing up fine. Like I can I can bop him a little bit, and he you know from either side, and he holds on there. The second I put in the combined gun. He starts leaning over the buffet bar Bye. and then dives in, heads in, and eats it all and ruins it for everyone. Gets his corona all over the lettuce. No. So. Wow. wow, Veronica, you're just a terrible person. What a jerk, right? Absolutely. I mean, I've he has a face mask. Even for a Decepticon. Come on. Sure does have a mask. Does have a face mask. It's true. Yeah, you think he's responsible until he gets his corona on the lettuce, apparently. <laughs> he, he was trying. So do y'all think that there will be any improvements for God Neptune for a combined mode? Nope, zero. I don't think so either. But... I think it's just going to be this exact same set with a with one remolded figure and then really Some shitty white plastic. Yeah, worse plastic. It's I'm, basically going to be looking... worse, but a little bit worse. The gorgeous white plastic, yes. I'm I'm looking forward to Only having the debate so. about the white plastic anyone or whatever who, like when it comes anyone in. Anyone who likes God Neptune from the nineties likes that plastic. I like God you guys Neptune. Are just too old and I still like that. I like God Neptune from the nineties and I hate that plastic too. It is totally the same. I mean I, I don't disagree, but and because it is. It's, it's like soap. <laughs> You're like soap. I'm still kind of shocked that Anna's getting that figure. So fresh and so clean. I don't know. It's just something about it. Something about the obscurity just really appealed to me when I heard it was coming. I just really wanted it. Oh, also, it's, it's one of those things with your one per character that you're like, ha ha, I don't have a god Neptune. So. Never come out of my country, so this is great. There's that, but then there's also the fact that I kind of wanted to play with fate and order it from somewhere else to see if I get it before you guys so I can rub it in your faces. Because I think that would be hilarious. I don't know. I got it from a supplier who's pretty good at getting their stuff early. Uh, so it sounds well, like I'll, I'll, I'll be the one that's... Good. I'm just being mean to my friends. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Cr Christian and I will be I... the ones that are sitting there wait waiting. You you and uh, Rob can have your own show on it and you can bash it. There we go. <laughs> we'll talk about why it's bad. And then you guys, like two weeks later, can talk about why that it's perfect. I'm going to do this really optimistic. Two shows side by side. I'll do that show, that episode from the bathtub, because it's soap. <laughs> I'll be using it as soap. <laughs> wow. Perfect. It'll be from you know, it, it's funny, though, because, like, uh, I actually was on the fence about getting God Neptune. And I think, is today the last day? Oh, shit. Like, You've been roboting, like, off and on. I don't know what's going on. Did you know? I guess. Guys. No, he definitely did. Today oh, now, he's, now we've lost him. Completely. Oh, now they've lost us. Usually, I, if we lose, I like, can hear you guys. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say you. Uh, you don't want to lose me. Um, can you guys hear me? Do, do we have you now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, All right. Yeah. So now that you're back. Oh no! Go ahead. Finish. I was gonna say. So I was really been on the fence about him, and so I actually did not order it from the same supplier that you guys did, just because I can cancel mine at any time and I don't have to worry about it. Uh, so that was the reason I I did it that way, just because if I decide to get cold feet, which I probably won't, um, I'll probably go ahead and, and get it because I feel like even the figures where I was kind of on the fence about, um, you know, I ended up you know circling back around and getting them so. That's going to be my combined mode. Like, I'm going to, when I get God Neptune, I'm going to play with it, but then I'm going to put that one up combined. And I don't have enough to combine for this thing, so they're all going to be separate little animals, except for Turtler. He's going to be super Turtler mode. But the rest are probably going to be animals. I'd like to bitch about something else related to this set. <laughs> That's what this show is for. I, cre I, I came up with this idea one day. I was talking to Lucas. I was just like, we need to make a show where we just bitch about things and never say anything positive. TFLP is too positive. So, <laughs> Rob, please go ahead. The combined sword, like the, you know, the silver with that touch of light pink, like it looks great and it's cool or whatever. But they didn't paint the handles for obvious reasons. But then they didn't cast them in the same damn color. So you got these four <laughs> bits of different color that just, it's, it's like, you're so close guys. 
Right, like, they're just like, little blue balls. Like, I understand they don't want to paint the handles. Like, Masterpiece, they'd paint the handles and be like, you know, you deal with paint chips yourself, you know. Um, but they should have all been cast in silver plastic underneath or at least all the same color. I mean, come on. <laughs> it's like, it, just, it looks it looks dumb. It, if all of it was black instead of... If it was at least you know, all the whatever. same color, it'd be better. Yeah, but it's not. Yeah. I agree with you on that one. It does make it look bad. That is the one negative I have about not owning all of these, is I don't get to make the cool weapon. I'm stuck with just a regular little sword. And, like, some weird shape things. I, I tried to make, like, a little sub-weapon earlier today that's kind of like oh, a knuckle blade and a sword thing. But not very convincing. The way the sword combines is actually pretty cool. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah. I like the engineering on it. And yep. holding the sword doesn't make him fall over on, like, the combined gun mode does. You know, it probably because it doesn't come out. out of place. But I could probably switch hands and it would be different. I've got four of them to use. So. Does your fist for, uh, uh, is that Lob Claw? He, it wants to come out constantly. Like, I mean, it's in there and it's fine now, but if I mess with it, or, you know, when he, when he takes one of his mini falls, that fist always comes flying out. It just doesn't peg in super well. It's like, honestly, it's, like it's 100% dependent on probably each figure. Mine is fine. But I know, like, I've had this issue with other Combiner Wars figures where one of the joints is, is loose. So the only thing I could tell you is, is throw some future in there and hope for the best. It, it just it feels like it it yeah. doesn't All have enough grip. Morpheus said it's bad, so yep, yeah, there's some future on it. Oh, It'll fix everything. Future. There you go. Or if you so, don't have future and you don't know what that is, it's it's called Pledge Floor Care Finish or Polish now. Yeah. They keep changing yeah. the name every two years, so it's hard to keep track. Yeah, it's not future. Uh, or there is no future. Or if you're friends with a lady, you can use clear nail polish. That'll help you too. You don't have to be a lady. Anyone can wear a nail polish. It's 2020. Cool. If you're friends with someone who has clear nail, clear nail polish, you can use there clear nail polish too. Or if you yourself have it. Or if you she had some clear people. nail polish will help you. Yes. Some That's people this show might own clear nail polish. I don't know. So I, I, I will purpose. say though that I, I am somewhat excited that uh, this guy did not take the crown of the best Hasbro Takara combiner. So my favorite character is still the king. So, who's that? Computron, United Warriors version. Oh, I'd give I it to Devastator. To my What's that? I don't. Know. I'd give it to I Devastator. Don't I don't know if that cheats. Well, I mean that's Devastator different. Auto so and, much combiner Wars. We we can all that's say that way. we like those larger combiners better and wish that Hasbro would come out with those, and then Christian will just blow a gasket and be like, no. No, the Devastator is a complete action figure. Like it actually like stays yeah, together and, and doesn't now, flop about. For the past year, I've had one that's the same size as everyone else, and it's amazing. Yeah, instead, I'm trying to get things bigger. Since I took my Superior on bigger, I want to take the other ones bigger. Yeah, I don't but, know where this falls in my rankings of favorite Scramble Combiner War figures. I just um, I haven't had time to really sit with this one and, and think about it. The I look is the certainly individual. more unique than anybody else. Yeah. The individual guys are better. Like, as separate figures, I would say these are a step above the other Combiner Wars guys just because they're painted, and I feel like, you know, they're kind of, they're all, um, except for Seaween, they're all kind of, um, oh, what is the word? Self-actualized versions of their molds like they are just kind of like you know they took the mold you know they took ripper snapper and made him as good as you can make ripper snapper they took blot and made him as good as you can make blot they took that freaking awful autobot woman mold and made it into something that's actually decent i still baffle at how i can like that thing ever <laughs> When y'all are ranking your Combiner Wars stuff, so you're just you're not you're excluding Devastator. That's fine. Are you counting the Botcon 2016 set? Yes. Sure. <laughs> yes. No. Sure. I don't feel like I have enough of the Combiners to 
bother ranking them, but I do. I have all of them. I, I have all that. the combiners. I have so many fan mode combiners. I've got all the Reaper labels combiners. I got the Botcon combiners. Like all three of those, four of those, four of those. <sighs> I mean, it's probably my favorite just because I have so few, and I like Pronicon. I love the colors. And, like, he's standing good right now. Just don't put anything else in his hands, and he'll I'll be able to get him back on the shelf, and he'll stay there just fine. I think but, unupgraded, this is probably the best mm-hmm. for me. But I've put upgrades on everybody else except Orthia. Orthia is obviously the worst. Um, I probably still like my Combiner Wars Computron the best now that I've put all the upgrade kits on it. Yeah. yeah but if, you, if you take upgrades away from everybody... Tyrannicon's probably the best. Will God uh, Neptune uh, win that? Mm, we'll see. <laughs> I wanted to say that in the Discord chat, Rodimus mentioned the whole idea of scale with the Titan class combiners. And I agree with that. The Titan class combiners actually are a lot more scary looking with your other like generations figures than the Combiner Wars size. Like, this size is not that intimidating when it stands over your, like, Voyager class Optimus or whatever. But when you have those freaking Titans class, really large ones, standing over your little puny Voyager guys, it looks really cool. Like, it's a nice effect of, like, these things are absolutely terrifying. I, say, I, I do can... think that that's just neater. Yeah, and we've talked among our, our cast about what we want to see next, and we've talked Titan Combiners before, and I don't think Devastator and Predakin are the way forward, but if they want to make you know, dedicated Combiners that are like this, but you know, bigger, um, that are actually good, I would probably pay 200 bucks from a, for a Hasbro Titan Combiner that was like real good. Like Devastator and Predakin are not going to cut it. They need to be good toys. I just really like those. It is so strange. I mean, I think Predaking looked like garbage, and I never bothered to pick it up. But Devastator is fun, other than like Long Haul kind of kind of sucks. But that's where they made everybody else really great, so Long Haul took the shaft. <laughs> but that's, that's fine. I'm adding you know 50 bucks to the budget of that one to to make it so that doesn't have to happen as much. But what about Siege Devastator coming out? Not that. Oh. <laughs> Or sorry, Studio Series, Jesus. Oh. I was going to say, I was like, oh. are you, is there a new rumor that I missed? Uh, for no, the show? sorry. I'm an idiot. We all knew that. Uh, what about, it looks like, what well, that combiner is, what, 250 bucks? Um, mm-hmm. That's kind of where I like it, actually. It's, it, I haven't had it in hand, of course, because Overload's not out here yet, but that appears like it will be the most complete and sturdiest combiner they've ever made. We'll see. Yeah. I mean, it'll be interesting because, you know, this here is still that Combiner Wars, Scramble City style yep. that I'll do. Or Studio Series is just, I don't, I, don't, I don't know how they combine yet. I haven't gotten that far. <laughs> but, you know, it's just, it's all off the wall. It's a, it's a very unique combination system. I do like the Combiner Wars initiated scrambling. I think the, uh, the peg system they use is the best combining mode they've come so far. Because it, it makes it be able to slot in and be secure instead of having to push in and break off like the G1 ones did or like the uh, false Cybertron ones did. So this this system works for me, and I want to see them continue to use it. Uh, they can make it bigger. They can make them compatible with these or not. I don't care, but this system works. Uh, it's too bad the hands and feet are such a step back from the Energon combiners, though, because th- those were <laughs> yeah. so good. Those were so good. So good. So good. No, those were I want to say we, that... we had to have those to get to here. On that Predakeen, I want to say that when that Predakeen came out, Lucas replaced his Feral Rex and sold it to me. And when the upgrades came out for that Predakeen, I ended up replacing that Feral Rex. I, I actually think the combined out. mode of Predakeen looks better than Feral Rex. So do I. So do Personally. I. I actually think it does. Feral Rex is like kind of this weird... I don't know. He's kind of bulbous. Like he doesn't. I want to say chubby, but he doesn't actually look chubby. He, he did not skip kind of leg day. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. He's just this very like rounded, bulbous, and that um again that party king just looks like a single figure. It doesn't really look like a combiner. It looks like 
a figure that has the implication of being a combiner, but it's a single action figure. And at least mine has really good joints, but mine is the upgraded KO, so what can I, I say? Yeah, the joints are pretty good. pretty hard just there, because Predaking is one action figure. And that's what I don't like about it, because when you split it up into the individual modes, all of those individual modes are terrible. Predaking has one terrible. contiguous unit is pretty good. But that's not that's not what I'm looking for in my combiner, so that's why right. I don't like it. That's why I didn't buy it. You know, one I of the reasons. That. Like, <laughs> Razor Claw, I think, looked pretty decent, but I wasn't going to buy the set just for a decent Razor Claw to be by himself. Yep. All right, and, well, and even though I keep all these combiners in combined mode you know, most of the time, that they can separate into fully functional and good-looking bots and vehicles and animals. Uh, that's important to me, and Predator King doesn't do that. That's, that's me. That's me. I agree. Yeah, no, I, I agree with all that. So, all right, we've probably gone long enough. So, uh, we're probably. almost approaching an hour here. Um, so, um, I guess, do you guys have any final thoughts? Seems like people are pretty happy. Like, we've gone through, we've gone through what? 70 plus 70 is 140. We've gone through $200 worth of figures. No, more than $200, like t- almost $250 worth of figures in these shows. And it seems like you all are pretty satisfied with them. And I'm happy with what I have. So, I guess we're good. It's far from a perfect set, but given that it is Combiner Wars, they did as much as you can do with Combiner Wars figures, realistically. And I love Piranicon, so I'm happy it exists. I'm glad that I own it. And, uh, you know, thanks for letting me be on the show for all the episodes. You know, after this, I will retreat back to my out my wallet hole. But uh, <laughs> for the most part, I'm sure I'll show up here and there. But it was fun doing them all. That's for sure. Yeah, I appreciate you joining us. I Even think our like, next adventure is going to be Netflix adventures. So you might not be too excited about those. I don't have them. So there you go. Exactly. <laughs> well, I'm trying to get them to let me do some third party stuff. So maybe we'll. We'll let you know when we do that as well. But yeah, I'd say overall I'm happy with the set. I'm, I'm glad that I got it. I think it nailed the look. You know, it's going to go with all my other Combiner Wars combiners. So, um, you know, I'm I'm still happy with it. I'm glad I made the purchase. So, um, I do want to say tomorrow night, check out Ouch My Wallet, uh, where Rob will be hosting this 8.30 Central, 9.30 Eastern on uh, YouTube. Uh, and then also uh, uh, check out Cut the Tape on Fridays or Saturdays. Just kind of depends on the timing. Uh, we usually put microcasters up on, on YouTube, like either Friday or Saturday, just kind of depending on the timing of when we can get the show uh, done for uh, for Rick's show. Uh, and then Sunday nights, uh, check out uh, TF Talk News. Uh, so there wasn't a lot of news this week, and it was Labor Day weekend or Memorial Day weekend, I'm sorry. Um, so uh, it was skipped this week, but it'll be back next week. Um, and then also TFLP on Monday nights. Uh, check that out. That's also on YouTube, and that's uh, 9.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central for that. So uh, thank you for everyone joining us uh, and the comments in the chat. And then uh, also if you want to, uh, we, we have a Discord channel that you guys can um, – join so that the link for that is on youtube is in the and chat it's, and it's also in the chat so it's active and if you come it'll be more active but that's right. bye. all right well thanks everyone we just passed an hour so we'll go ahead and get out of here uh, macro pastors again bye Mm-hmm. <laughs>